Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's November the 4th today. I'm just going to spin you around again. Uh, so, back down on the micro orchard, as you can see, and what I want to do this morning is I've got some black polythene. It just arrived yesterday. Uh, I've got two lots like this. I uh, can't remember the thickness now, it's quite heavy duty. And I think it was 2 metres by 7 metres. So, uh, what I'm going to do is put that you know, over this bed here. So I'm just obviously going to fold this weed suppressing membrane back temporarily. I'll have to uh, get all the cat poo out. <laughs> There's probably loads of it. There's a, a root or something there I need to dig out. I'll just kind of rake it over a bit and then, um, yeah, get the polythene on and get some bricks on it, weigh it down. And then that'll keep it weed free until I'm ready to plant into it next spring. I'll probably plant potatoes as the first crop just to, it's always a good crop to uh, put into ground that's sort of not uh, been grown in for quite some years. So. Although, when I say not grown in, as you know, it was a soft fruit bed, but it hasn't been sort of dug or tilled on a regular basis. Anyway, I'll crack on, guys, and uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, guys, so I've got it roughly, you know, raked out. I've cleared the cap. <laughs> My God, there was quite a lot, I can tell you. Um, and I got that root out as far as I could anyway. It went down quite a ways, but I got most of it out, I think. So, we'll get the poly on now. Right plenty big enough. I've got some overlap uh, on the edges as well which I'll probably just roll over and then I'll get some bricks on it now and then uh, obviously that's the wind isn't going to take it anywhere and like I say that'll cover it all now nicely uh, until next spring um, when it's dried out like I say we can get it planted up. I've got the same amount for this side so by the time we get to next spring, all the leeks will have gone. Um, obviously the spring cabbage won't have, but the idea is that I'll have two beds the same size and I say I can just keep them covered for the winter and uh, yeah, so I'll get that, uh, I'll get the bricks on now. Right guys, there we go. You might think I've gone over killing the bricks, but believe me, uh, it's pretty exposed this site, so Hopefully that'll stay put and when it rains of course the rain will pool a bit and weight down as well. So anyway, I think the only thing I need to do now is a bit of uh, exposed soil there. So if I don't cover that of course they're going to use that as the loo. So I'll, I think I'll just chuck a bit of this carpet over there for now. <coughs> Excuse me, the other job I need to do is get the... Uh, remaining fuel out of the tank here. I don't actually think there's that much in. Can't really see but uh, I... so there's not a whole bunch in it but I need to uh, get it out. You don't want to be leaving fuel in your machines over winter. It gunges up the carb. So um, anyway I'm not looking forward to this but I've got a piece of uh, siphon tube here and just see if we can get that fuel out and then once I've got most of it out there'll be a a little bit left I'll just start it up and then run it until it's all gone and then it should be fine it should crack up pretty much in the first few pulls next spring. There wasn't that much what I'm doing now I've just got that clicked on there and then uh, it shouldn't take long now for the remnants of the petrol just to run through and then like I say we'll be good to go. I think guys that took about three minutes I guess but now I know that that fuel is completely gone. Like I said, uh, it will be, it should start up no problem at all next spring. You know, when I come to start cutting the grass again. So yeah, just a top tip there: if you've got power tools, uh, whether it's two-stroke or whatever, you just definitely do not want to leave the uh, fuel in the tank. You know, get it drained out. Otherwise, there's a risk it'll gun your carburetor up. Okay. Gonna fuel. That's some old stuff, so some that I've just drained in it now, that lawnmower, and others is all two-stroke from strimmers and what have you. So I just tend to keep that because it's handy for when you're having uh, fires and what have you. So just one more thing I want to update you on now, I'm just going to spin you around again. 
So if you recall in an earlier video, I mentioned about planting softneck garlic. It's the first time I've tried growing it along here. And uh, I've got shallots on this side. Anyway, I've just been having a look and... Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see that one. They're just coming through now. Looks like something's been scratching in there. But, yeah, I'm definitely pleased about that. It looks like uh, pretty much everyone's come through, so happy days. And then the elephant garlic, of course, that was only, that's under here, and I put that on because of the cats. Uh, in fact, if you've if you've got any strategies for stopping cats pooing in your soil, um, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you do, what's effective, and because obviously I think it's going to be a continuing bit of a, an issue this with these moggies, you know. But uh, anyway, yeah. So as I was saying, the elephant garlic. Um, I'll keep the net on because it should just push up. I don't think it'll be an issue. Well, I'll catch you later, and I think that's all I've come to do this morning. I've got to go back up home now and um, sort some uh, pallet wood for the uh, log burner because we're pretty much getting that going every night now, so I'll catch you later. Right, guys, back again down the orchard. It's uh, November the 5th, bonfire night, so um, all I'm doing now is just uh, digging out the first of this season's leeks, which I did say I would share that with you, so let's get going and get some out. It's a variety muscle burnt, that's the one I always grow. Uh, sown in the greenhouse in pots, usually about end of last week of February, and then you see that uh, as soon as the first early potatoes are lifted, these leeks go straight in, same piece of ground. Up. Quite clean actually because the, the ground's had a chance to dry out a little bit, so it's not bad. Right, I think there's uh, about a half dozen there. You see that? Sun's kind of right on the camera. Well, I've just given them a little bit of a clean up, and uh, I think that's a result. Can't be uh, unhappy about that, really. See a nice length of white stem, pretty good size, so that's a result in my eyes. I think it's a chicken, bacon and leek pie or something like that coming on. Anyway, for, I'll put a card up somewhere at the end of the video. Anyone who hasn't really had any experience of growing leeks, I've, I've got some videos um, on that so I'll put a card up if it helps at the end. Okay guys, well that's it for this one folks. Thanks as always for watching, I do appreciate your support. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button if you're liking the content and uh, hit that subscribe button as well and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye for now.